Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we are going to do a double jump, a quadruple jump like Kirby in Smash Bros, or unlimited jump like Kirby Adventure. This method also supports double jump after falling down from the platform. And uh, yeah, in this tutorial, there are four parts in total. First, a simple double jump. Second, a quintuple jump like Kirby in Smash Bros. Third, unlimited jump like Flying Kirby. Fourth, the bonus part, which is to add the direction to the jump. Step 1, we will see how to do a double jump. Here we have a person node on with a simple control like up, down, left, right, and also B for jumping. I have also attached the camera. And here is the head up display for showing the number, which we will use for debunking later. Okay, so when we do double jump, there are two questions. So let's say the first question, when can a person do a double jump? A person can do a double jump if the person has not done a double jump before and when the person does not touch the floor and also when B is pressed. For the first condition, we need a counter to track if a person has done the double jump or not. So we are going to go to the middle and then flag counter random and then counter. In the counter settings, we change the mode to be range, and the count range is from 0 to 1. The count timing should be on change from 0. For the debugging purpose, let's connect the counter output to the number node on. And basically, this counter will keep the number of jumps that a person can do. In the second condition, which is we can only do double jump when the person does not touch the floor. So here we need a touch sensor to determine if the person is touching the floor or not. So we go to objects and then sensors and then touch sensor. We resize it to be quite thin and then we connect this to the person. We go to the settings. Okay, let's keep it as visible for now so that we can see what happens. And for the output timing, it should be while touched. The connection point should be below the person, so it should be from Y positive to Y negative. And check what? Here, it should also check the word and then actually any other object that the person can stand on. Okay, close it. So now when we go to see the game, right? A person now has the touch sensor below its body. When a person is touching the floor, the counter should be reset to zero. Also, when the person does not touch the floor, we have to increase the counter. To do that, we have to add the condition if not touch, then increasing the counter. So we go to middle logic not. And then we attach the output of the touch sensor to not node on. And then we connect this to the count up part of the counter. Okay, but now if we jump, the counter does not increase. So actually, we need one more node on, which is a trigger node on. So I'm going to add this trigger node on after not, and then connect this to the count up part of the counter. So now when I jump up, the counter will show one. But if I touch the floor, it will be reset to zero. For the third condition, we need a button B. But basically, we can do the double jump when this counter is not zero and button B is pressed. So here we can add and logic. So when the output here is true, we should do the double jump. But how to do the double jump? The idea is that when a double jump happens, we will teleport a person upward. So here we will need a teleport entrance. And then we are going to connect to the person. Then I also need a teleport exit. Connect this to the person. Then for the teleport entrance settings, I have to teleport a person. And for the teleport exit, 
I have to change the teleport physics to be reset. Launch speed is the strength of the double jump. Let's try at something randomly. When the person leaves the teleport exit, it will go up in the Y direction. And don't forget to use this and output to control the teleportation. And also when we do the double jump right, we have to count down the counter. Okay, let's test. So now I cannot do double jump. The counter is zero. After I jump and I'm floating, I can do one double jump. Yay. Before we continue, let's add some effect. So I'm going to add like a sound here. I connect the sound output to the person. And when the double jump happens, I should play this sound. Then I go to the settings. I'm going to change it to be bubble sound effect. Then also add some smoke. I go to the effect and then smoke. I connect this to the person. Then I go to the settings. Yeah, I want the effect location to be the word because I do not want the smoke to fill the camera. And I did remove visible the the smoke should be below the person, so I'm changing the connection point to be from center to Y negative. And don't forget to send the signal from N to this effect as well. Okay, let's try it. So, yay, now the double jump works. Okay, let's try this case also, when I'm falling off from the platform. So now the person is standing on the platform. When I'm falling, I can do one double jump. Which is what we want. Okay, so in Smash Bros, the Kirby can do 5 jumps. And to change this single double jump into 5 jumps, there are very few steps. The first step is to change the counter range. To be from 0 to 5 instead. And here, instead of count up only 1, we are going to count up by 5 instead. So here we need a map. And this map will convert the input 1 into 5. So the output range should be from 0 to 5. And then we connect the output of the trigger into map. And the output of the map into count up port. Yeah, and anything else remains the same. Let's try it. Okay, let's try dropping from the platform. See, the counter is 5. So now I will try double jump. See, I can jump 5 times. And then after that, no more. Okay, what if we want to fly? And we want to allow unlimited jumps. To do that, we can remove this part. And then we only need to keep like not touching and B is pressed. Right. Then we can do the double jump like this one. Yeah, we can keep flying like Kirby. Yay! Okay, so here is the bonus part. I want to make sure that I can also add some like horizontal direction when I do the double jump. The idea is that I have to rotate the teleport exit. And yeah, we need X hinge connector. I'm going to connect this X hinge connector to the person nodon. Let's delete a link between the person nodon and the teleport exit. But notice that we cannot connect this to the hinge directly. So I need a simple box. I'm connecting this to the hinge connector. And then I go to the box settings. In the box settings, I remove everything except visible and movable. I keep visible so that we can see what's going on. And for the connection point, I keep it to be center to center. And then I connect the teleport exit to the object box. Okay, let's look at the person node on. So whenever the button is pressed, this box should rotate and point to the front. So first step, we need to add absolute value to all these sticks. 
so that when this sticks output as negative one, the output here will be one. Next, I'm going to add the map. Basically, this map will tell how much we want to rotate the teleport object. So the input range is from 0 to 1, and the output range is from negative 30 to 0. And because I want to make sure that when the button is pressed, the box will rotate by negative 30 degree, I have to click reverse here. So you see, when the input is 0, it will be mapped to 0. But when the input is 1, it will be mapped to negative 0. I'm crossing it. And then I connect this map output to the hinge input. And I connect these two absolute value into map. Okay, let's test it. So now when I walk, see, the box will point to the front. Yeah. So now when I do the double jump, see, it will also have the horizontal movement. Notice that this jump becomes quite small. So yeah, the last step is to increase his jump strength. Okay, let's try it. So here, yeah. Now I can control the direction of his double jump. And that's it for today. I also have other tutorials on YouTube, so please check it out. Lastly, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye, and see you next time.